clinical interpretation of immunogenicity antibody assays part two is basically going to be a very high level explanation of the assay so that you can understand better how to interpret the results and understand what is being assayed and how. So before we go into the assay for detecting anti-drug antibodies, I just want to remind you um, a more thorough explanation was done on part one of the immunogenicity series in YouTube. But just remember that you have a drug. Uh, the drug can be an antibody or a protein. <clears throat> this particular drug has a drug target. The drug target can be soluble, as shown on the left, or bound to a membrane, as shown on the right. So you have a drug and you have a natural drug target uh, that is in the human beings that you want to modulate. When you have anti-drug antibodies, they could be binding the functional site of the drug. And so this is what we know as neutralizing antibodies. And they may be competing with a natural target. So in other words, uh, these anti-drug antibodies can decrease the efficacy of your drug. Anti-drug antibodies could also bind outside the antigen binding site and your drug could still be able to engage with the target. Uh, in these cases, because it's binding the FC portion and the FC portion has several effector functions, uh, you need to understand if this particular binding outside the antigen binding site is impacting efficacy. For more details on what I'm saying now about how they can affect efficacy even if they're binding outside the antigen binding site, or in other words, if they're not neutralizing antibodies, they could still be impacting efficacy uh, please see part one of immunogenicity series. When detecting anti-drug antibodies, there's a few things that might be good to know. So the first thing is the detection methodology called the Metroscale Discovery uh, Platform, which is the MSD platform. Uh, basically, how this uh, works is you have your drug uh, that is now depicted on the green, uh, and that drug actually is uh, bound to the solid assay. So it's on your plate. It's captured the drug that you're using. If a patient has developed anti-drug antibodies, these antibodies, when you wash the plate with the patient's serum, will bind to the drug that's solid phase attached on your platform. And then uh, once you wash out the rest of the blood from the patient on this assay, the anti-drug antibodies remain bound to the drug. And then you use the same drug uh, that's labeled to get a reading. This is a very easy way to understand the concept of how an anti-drug antibody assay is done. Now, what are the many challenges and why are we talking about validating these assays? And when you get uh, false positives, false negatives, what's happening? It seems like a seemingly simple idea, but it's not that easy. So the major challenges that we have found are what we call a target interference that can lead to false positive results and drug tolerance that can lead to false negative results. So if you hear target interference or drug tolerance when, uh, when analyzing the assays that you were using to detect anti-drug antibodies, uh, I hope this talk will be a bit more clear in how this is working. So let's talk about target interference. Your drug is actually designed to bind a target. And when that target is soluble, then when you are actually detecting the blood from your patient, let's say that this patient has absolutely no anti-drug antibodies, but they have the soluble target. So if you're using an anti-VGEF as your drug, 
Well, the patient has VGEF circulating or an anti-TNF. Well, the patient can have the TNF circulating in the blood. Most likely they do. So when you're using the blood on this assay, because you have actually designed your drug to bind that soluble target, now what you are actually detecting is this soluble target binds the solid face capture drug, and it will also be detected by the label drug. This is why the target interference produces false positive results. There are many different ways that in the validation of your assays can be done, like acid dissociation, incubation overnight. So there are many different ways to make sure that when testing the samples from patients, the, the serum from patients, it does not have that soluble target or the soluble target has been diluted sufficiently. However, you should not be diluting anti-drug antibodies that could be in the patient's blood. So this is one uh, of the key challenges when validating any drug antibodies. It's called target interference. And that's, again, when your target is a soluble target because you're using serum samples from the blood. And most likely, these patients have that soluble target in the blood. What is drug tolerance? Drug tolerance is another one of the key factors when looking at anti-drug antibodies uh, in terms of the assay because it can actually lead to false negative results. So in this case, what I'm depicting here is the drug in the blood. So this is the drug that you're dosing the patient with. I have put a different uh, sort of uh, lines around these uh, images because you have to remember we're using the same drug that's captured on the solid face and we are using the same drug that's labeled. So now the patient has drug in the blood because you've been dosing the patient and let's say the patient does have anti-drug antibodies but they're bound to the drug in the blood. So when the patient has a serum sample with antibodies that are bound to the drug in the blood that you gave them, they may have a free site that could still bind to the solid phase capture drug, but they don't have any more sites to actually be able to detect it with the labeled drug that you're bringing. And that's why even in the presence of anti-drug antibodies, you can have a false negative result if there's still sufficient drug in the blood. So this is one of the reasons why we need to understand when is this uh, sample taken and the validation assays for that particular drug. These examples pertain to drugs that are therapeutic proteins as antigens. Anti-drug antibody detection to drugs that are also antibodies and act as potential antigens uh, is uh, similar to therapeutic protein assays using the mesoscale discovery or the MSD platform. In a simplistic way, I will explain what uh, that assay is and how we could understand the challenges. Basically, you have uh, the drug that's depicted here in green and it has been bound to the solid face. When you run the blood from the patient, if that patient has anti-drug antibodies, they will bind to the drug that you have captured on the plate. And when you bring an, uh, a drug that's labeled, then that drug will also bind the anti-drug antibodies and you will get a result for presence of anti-drug antibodies. When your drug is an antibody itself, it can be a bit confusing. So that's why I think sometimes that these images can help. Now, what are the challenges in this case that seems a seemingly simple assay? Well, we can have target interference that gives false positive results, or you can have drug tolerance that can produce false negative results. And this can happen when, for instance, your uh, target for your drug is a soluble target. So you have engineered a drug 
that binds a soluble target. It could be a TNF, for instance, which is a cytokine, could be any other kind of interleukin. So you can have antibodies to soluble targets, could be VGEF, you know, growth factor. If that soluble target is in the patient's blood, which mo most likely it is, when you do this assay and you use the blood from patients, that soluble target will be bound to the, to the drug that you have on the plate. Your drug, again, has been engineered to bind this soluble target. So now, instead of having an anti-drug antibody in the serum, you have the soluble target in the serum. It binds the captured drug and it will be identified by the label drug. That's the reason why target can interfere with the assay and in the complete absence of anti-drug antibodies could produce a false positive result because what you're actually measuring is not anti-drug antibodies, is the soluble target. Part of the validation of all of these assays is to find the ways in the protocol for the lab when you are sending the blood from your patients to be tested, the laboratory needs to provide and understand the validation of the assay itself and if they need to pre-incubate the blood. Sometimes it's pre-incubation with certain buffers like with acid buffers. Uh, there are sometimes incubation with the drug itself and then washing out so that you could get rid of the soluble target without getting rid of anti-drug antibodies in the blood because those are the ones that you need to detect. So when you're looking at anti-drug antibodies, just make sure you understand what is the assay you're using, the validation, make sure you use a validated company and assay when they're commercially available so that you understand what is the probability of false positive results if there is a soluble target in the case of your, the drug you're using. The other situation is what we call the drug tolerance. So now imagine that your patient actually has drug in the blood. And so this drug in the blood could be circulating. And now this drug in the blood is going to actually uh, be bound by anti-drug antibodies. So in this case, the patient has anti-drug antibodies and they may have a valence available to bind the biotin captured on the solid phase. So your drug has been designed to actually be bound as a capture and also as a labeled drug. But when you have the complex of the anti-drug antibody and the drug in the blood, your labeled drug is no longer going to be able to detect that anti-drug antibody because it's already bound by your drug in the blood. So in this case, it is important to know what is the half-life of the drug. Has the assay been validated? to be detected after five half-lives. For instance, when you already know there's no more drug in the blood of that patient, or is there anything you can do to assess the true uh, false negatives, if there's really any drug antibodies and how this assay has been actually characterized. I hope this is helpful. It's a complex uh, theme. And I think sometimes putting it in images may be helpful. If you have other questions or if you want to know more about immunogenicity, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and see the other available videos. The neutralizing antibody assays are based on the following principle. The non-cell based assay will have the drug capture on a solid phase and the soluble target is labeled is used on the plate and when there's the engagement of the drug and the target of that drug, there will be a signal that is measurable and quantifiable. So this would be the normal response to the, to the drug. To this particular assay, you then use the blood from patients. If the patient's blood do not have neutralizing antibodies, this will work and there will be a signal.
However, if the blood from the patients have antibodies which have neutralizing ability, they will bind the FAB portion and they will compete with the label target and there will be no signal. This is the way to determine the neutralizing antibodies when you have a soluble target. It's non-cell based assay because the target that's labeled in the assay is non-cell based. It's a soluble target. The cell based assay neutralizing antibody tests are used when the drug binds a cell receptor as a target and what you measure is basically when that drug engages with the receptor there would be a signal on that cell and the cell will then be uh, prepared in this assay for sending a signal that we can measure. A cell-based assay neutralizing antibody is usually bit more complicated than when you have a soluble target, but it may be necessary when your drug requires that neutralizing activity to be measured in the living target cells. Again, these are modified so that when the receptor, the target cell receptor is engaged by the drug, they will emit a signal that's measured. So by having this assay, when you incubate now the drug that's in the solid phase with the blood from the patient, if the blood from the patient has neutralizing antibodies, that means that the drug will no longer be able to bind the target on the cell. And by not binding, the cells would not be stimulated and there's no signal. So that's how the neutralizing antibody cell-based assays work in a principle. There are many other ways of doing it and this is an area of very active research and there's more and more ways to look at neutralizing antibodies when you do whole cells for detecting that particular ability of blocking the function of the drug. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like on the YouTube channel and if you are new to my channel or you have come back but you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much. I hope this was useful and see you next time.